Looking into the future can seem a little scary, which is why we love futurist Nicholas Badminton, who always helps us understand the changes coming a little bit better. Well, now he's sharing those insights in a new book called Facing Our Futures, How Foresight, Futures Design and Strategy Creates Prosperity and growth. It is just out this morning. Nick is here in studio. First of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for signing. It says happy Valentine's Day from, no, no it doesn't. Come on. <laughs> uh, I want to say to you, and I do say this to you all the time, I am both fascinated and frightened by our conversations and what you yeah. reveal to us. What do you say to people who feel a little overwhelmed thinking about the future? So, you know, we're, we're, we can either like do the work and imagine what's good and what's bad that's coming for us and make better decisions today. We can be part of the future or we can just ignore it. Um, but we're still part of the future anyway. It's just other people are gonna make decisions for us. So be informed. Be informed, get involved. Face your future is what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, you talk about in this book, the field of futurism yeah. writing, and all these new things, these new inventions, and new powers come crowding along. Everyone is fraught with consequences, and yet it is only after something has hit us hard yeah. that we set about dealing with it. So what are the biggest events that you've either experienced or that you foresee? So, you know, we've talked about generative AI a lot. There's going to be lots of fallout from that. I talk about the water energy food nexus. You know, we have to work out water scarcity, how to feed people, how to keep the lights on. They're, they're the things that I'm the most uh, focused on. So uh, being able to look, at, look ahead and think about the consequences of decisions that we make and speculate on our futures is going to be so important important. In fact, like this is the missing link in strategic planning in the mm. world today. Fascinating. So you've been on this show now actually for five years. Five years. We've had a lot of these kinds of conversations. Yeah. Some of this book was written during the pandemic. Did it inform or change any of what's in here? The entire book was written in the pandemic. Uh, so this sort of came from a, a number of different conversations I was having, the work we were doing here, the work I was doing with clients as well. And it just seemed to like gain momentum. So I started writing and suddenly I had 86,000 words. Wow. Yeah. And it's obviously edited down from that. And suddenly, you know, the book here it's got some sort of essential thinking and uh, the clients that I work with are starting to be more profitable they're starting to have bigger rates of growth they're starting to look after their people better as well so it's been really really good and heartening to do this so it's fantastic that it's here today how does looking at the past help us to both predict and prepare for what's coming it's a reference point so we know if we make bad decisions, mm -hmm. what can go wrong? So for the last 300 years, we've been unchecked with the industrial complex and revolutions that have happened there. And we're kind of on life support. We're constantly keeping our world alive and making sure that everything's okay. So those reference points just really feed into, okay, if we look ahead, how can we make better decisions, more, more equity, more equality, and just a better world for everyone versus you know the greed and the money and all of that stuff that's kind of driven our industrial world today? Yeah. You know, you you and I will have these conversations and a little, what people don't see at home is we have a little bit of debate sometimes back yeah. and forth, but you know, you've changed my perspective on a few things. Thank um, you. Chapter seven is called Igniting Imagination. It starts off with a wonderful quote from writer Octavia E. Butler. It says, every story I create creates me. I write to create myself. So how does your work imagining the future inspire you creatively? So, I mean, there's the strategic parts of this. We find signals, we find trends, we do scenario planning, that's cool. The, the real sharp end of this is storytelling. So I actually write long form stories and, and I write books, I write short form uh, sort of fiction as well that helps us really inform where we can be. Once we can tell a story and we can place the people that we work with and the companies or you know places like Toronto, whatever, in these future, times of like 2050, 2100 and beyond, we can really feel what the future is like. When you can feel what the future is like, you have empathy about the people and the places, the systems mm. and everything. You can really start to work out those dynamics and then that's evidence for us to be able to bring back to today and make better decisions on what we're doing today strategically. I love that. You know, one of the things that you helped to change my mind on, Nick, was the fact that, you know, you and I were back and forth about AI and using it for writing and yeah. you gave to me the comparison. You said it's like using a calculator. Yeah which we're not longhand math, we're using a calculator. That's right. Interesting perspective. The book is called Facing Our Futures. It is available today from futurist Nicholas Badminton. Thanks, Thank Nick. Thanks so much. And congratulations. Thanks.